Now, it was Galileo who did some pioneering work in, in the field of motion. Okay? What he did? He did a brilliant kind of experiment. He, he took an inclined plane. Okay? He took an inclined plane and then here he took another inclined plane. Okay? Here he took another inclined plane. So and he he put a ball here. He put a ball here. And when released from here, he observed one thing. That is a very simple thing that we'll say it is so trivial. Why did he not understand it? But but look at how brilliant his deductions were. He observed that if ball this ball is left from here, then it it tends to attain the same height. First of all, it never attained, it never went beyond this and normally it remained short of it. But as he smoothened the path, as he made it smoother and smoother, the ball and the surface, he found that its tendency is to, its tendency is to attain that height. Okay. So, his tendency is to attain that height. The tendency of the ball is to attain that height. Okay. It will be better if, if these are smooth slopes. Otherwise, what happens? Energy gets lost here while bumping down and bumping off, right? Here. So, then what he did? Then, then, then suppose when the when these inclinations were the same, see, when these inclinations were the same, then what would happen? The distance traveled here and the distance traveled here would become equal, is it not? In this case, the distance that it has traveled is more. Now he started making it flatter and flatter like this. So, the tendency of the ball was to come to this place. You see? Tendency was to come to this place. Why? To attain the same height. Then, he made it maybe something like this. The tendency remained. The distances kept on increasing. Now what he did will astonish you. What he did, he made this flat. He made this straight. And he deduced something that is absolutely brilliant. He said that if it wants to keep on moving, till it attains this height, then when this is horizontal, it, it the ball should keep on moving and moving and moving till infinity. Why? Because it will never, never come up, but the ball still wants to seek that height. It wants to reach that height. So, in search of that, the ball will keep moving and he showed it by gradually smoothening the ball and the, and the track, he showed that, yes, it has a tendency to keep on moving, but what is obstructing me is that friction, is that friction and somehow I am not able to eliminate that friction. You understand? Somehow I am not able to eliminate that friction and that is why I am not able to 
able to show you that the ball will keep on moving till eternity. So everything that we studied till now plus this experiment of Galileo that tells you that an object if, if left to itself if there is no, no unbalanced force acting on it it will keep on moving and moving and moving and moving without stopping anywhere. But what misleads us is the fact that we will not be able to get an absolutely smooth surface with zero friction. Okay? That is what misled the earlier scientists as well. So, so these experiments of Galileo were seen by Newton and he formulated three laws of motion. Okay? These are known as the Newton's laws of motion. Okay? So, Galileo concluded that the balls left from the the balls released from released from the left flank from the left flank travels till it attains the same height on the right flank, right, on the right flank. as the slope of the right flank decreased the distance traveled by the ball to attain the same height increased okay now in the limit in the limit when he made the right plank horizontal when he made the right plank horizontal okay he expected the ball to keep traveling since it will never attain the same height since it will never attain the same height however in real situation the ball tended to stop correct however the distance covered by the ball however the distance covered by the ball increased as the smoothness of the surface 
increased fine so he came to the conclusion that it is the friction which is stopping the ball and if removed the ball will indeed travel travel till infinity and will never stop thus galileo understood that that it was the friction that stopped the ball and if the friction could be eliminated if the friction could be eliminated the ball would travel to eternity the ball would travel to eternity without stopping okay without stopping now it was this observation and this experiment that laid such a fundamental background for newton to build upon that he gave his first law based on and after understanding this and what does it say what does the first law say it says that an object at rest or in a state of uniform motion will continue to do so unless acted upon by an unbalanced force that is the newton's first law of motion so i'll i'll write it newton's first law of motion first law of motion what does it say says that an object at rest an object at rest or in a state of uniform motion continues to do so unless acted upon by an external unbalanced force okay he wrote a book by the name principia mathematica where he compiled this okay fine and we should understand it by everything that we have discussed prior to this including the galileo's experiment okay because it was this experiment that is this experiment and other observations that led them deny what earlier people had said they had said that the object has its natural state as the state of rest and that's why they never ever they 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 never ever keep on moving it was not that they are absolutely neutral to moving or at rest the only difference that is being made is by an unbalanced force if it is moving it keeps moving as here if it was at rest it will remain at rest that ball example unless we hit it it simply won't budge correct you understand fine so that is your newton's first law of motion now we'll see see how our real life observations support our newton's first law of motion okay